Why is anti-cheat difficult to implement and why aren't studios focusing it on much as much focusing on it as much as people think they should be? There's been a lot of stuff going on recently regarding hackers screwing with games and the com- a lot of communities feeling that studios aren't prioritizing that more. Fundamentally, the game is built the way it is to make it work. And the security that they have plugs certain holes. But the, the fundamental way a game is made is going to have fundamental security issues. And so people will be able to exploit that. So by the time you plug a security hole by the time you have a next another patch the ant the hackers and the people who can break apart your game have discovered other vulnerabilities so there's something more for them to exploit so it just keeps going on and on and it's just this really vicious cycle and i mean think indie games think about some of those games that blow up apex legends no marketing spin up just comes out of nowhere and millions of people play it Unless they had any inclination that hacking, like they probably knew what their security weaknesses were, but they didn't know how players were going to expose it. So just like making a game, hacking and creating cheats for it is just as a creative endeavor. So you might be able to plug a certain number of holes, but they may take a completely different take on how to create that hack. Just like how players play could play a game completely different than how the developers intend and it creates bugs it creates player exploits hackers just take that to another extreme of looking at the code um and an extreme that's even harder to safeguard against honestly exactly and it's always a temporary safeguard it's never a permanent one and uh valorant tried to work around that by give it making everyone give up kernel access yep it still hasn't stopped it. It's better. It's better. Valorant's pretty good. I, it's the best anti-cheat I've ever experienced, but... I mean, it, it's certainly better. It doesn't stop it because anyone can still make a temporary hack and go in and mess with it. And or like anyone who goes, okay, well, I'll grind up to whatever rank and then turn on my hacks. They have a history of not cheating and then performances that are in line with what is expected so then any anti-cheat is going to look at patterns and is this kind of in in line with the player's performance is this wildly abstract are they doing something that's crazy is there something in the the data that's being sent that is creating a flag it then just goes into that creative way that they manipulate the cheats the best cheaters won't have their hacks on all the time right yeah, I um, I, I think machine learning anti chi is definitely the future and could solve a lot of yeah. the problems we experience now. But we'll see when that happens. <laughs> and I mean, even scaling the ability for viewers to jump into a game. Think about this was a couple of weeks ago. Tim the Tapman and Courage they were streaming Warzone play, and they had engaged the developers like that morning, saying, "Hey, we will highlight cheaters." Can you do something about it? And so sure enough, they had a cheater in their game. They're spectating this guy and then he gets banned mid match and they celebrate. The more that we have people watching the game, drawing attention by the developers, the people who are actually able to legitimately call out hackers or give a team reason to look at someone live, then you start getting live response. Part of the problem with the perception of developers don't do anything about hackers is that there's a time delay between a report happening when something is evaluated and then when action is taken or if action can even be taken. That's why like the League of Legends and Riot method of saying, hey, someone you reported for X and X behavior has been punished. Same with Rocket League. It makes you feel like you participated in that it makes you feel like the system is working it makes you feel like justice is done yeah i mean now we can talk about count up oh, go ahead sorry i didn't mean to interrupt i was just saying not every game has that not every game has the support to be able to handle that part of the part of the problem right now is that we don't have ai and machine learning to do this it all comes down to individual review 
Yeah, I mean, we can yeah. talk about Counter Strike and over or Counter Strike and Dota implementing Overwatch anti cheat and anti like uh, harassment systems, right? Where they have real players just review matches or review replays, and those players are the ones deciding like, did this person harass people? Did this person cheat? And like, I mean, crowdsourcing your anti cheat is great if you have a player base big enough to make that work, but most games don't, right? And this is where going back to that conversation about code development could be a real big deal. Any uh, anyone who can come into your game, understand, break in, like understand your security risks, develop some some security for it, and then be on contract or uh, retained for a certain period of time to come through and fix things, and then you go through another group, and then you start. You're basically creating two factor authentication for your security group because then you're not having that same security signature every time you release an update that then after it's been broken once it's easier to break again you rotate through like you change passwords every few months to make sure that your security is retained that way yeah. code development is a thing ai is another way uh having dedicated staff on your team is another way that's what a lot of people do right now. A lot of companies right now expect that to be part of their customer service experience. So then when you're getting, why was I billed for this month also being handled by, hey, this guy's a cheater. It creates a slowdown and a, a, a plug in getting through that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm.